Hello everybody, this is Annie Sprinkles, or Scoops Lane, here on uh, March 8th, I believe is today. I haven't given you a daily scoop in a couple days. I believe the last scoop was uh, around a danger assessment. We, uh, we had the power and control wheels up here, and, um, and then we, we went through a danger assessment. So uh, I, put the, I put the wheels back up here today, but I want to focus on the equality wheel and healthy relationships. So um, I'm going to start out by reading a few of the survivor stories in the Harmony Quilt. And um, then I'm going to go through a little questionnaire. So while I'm reading these, um, I just want to let people know who are tuning in that um, if you've got a few minutes to get a piece of paper and a pencil, uh, you can kind of, you know, do this little assessment by writing it down. You can either write it down or, uh, and, you know, just put some thoughts around it um, and or you can just kind of think about it and do the scoring in your head. But... Where this come from, comes from is um, when I was at, at Stand Up Guys, some of you know I'm one of the co-founders, original co-founders of an, a local uh, organization called Stand Up Guys, and oh, we started uh, a grassroots uh, organization to engage men uh, and women as allies to prevent violence against women and girls and other men and boys. And uh, we started this about 2007. And um, so some of the work that we did over the years was uh, engaging men and uh, women on college campuses. So I met through this work uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. David Skiff out at Roberts Wellesley College. And um, he's the head of the social work department there and I believe the dean of the School of Education. And uh, I used to hold these learning sessions. We opened them up. They were free monthly learning sessions. Uh, we hosted them at Stand Up Guy's office right downtown at the Crime Victim Resource Center. And every month we had a different topic and anybody and everybody was welcome to come in and uh, sit through a one hour or 90 minute learning session. Similar kind of like to the Daily Scoop, only it was, you know, more interactive and we had guest speakers. So one of the months, I had Dr. Skiff come in and he talked about um, the haven of safety in marriages, in intimate partner relationships. So we went through a series of uh, questions and dialogue uh, around healthy relationships and is it safe is your marriage and or your intimate partner relationship safe so i know that on the last scoop we were focusing on a danger assessment like i said so this time i wanted to focus more on healthy relationships so while i'm the way this is kind of set up i'm only going to do one excerpt from this particular training that we got but what it is, is it's a series of 12 questions, okay? And then you, you rate them based on this scale that I'll explain. And uh, then the scaling is really how you perceive your spouse or your partner. So that's one of the scores that you, you put next to the question. And then the second part of it is, what do you think your spouse or your partner would say about you as it relates to the same question. So I'll go over these instructions again for people that are gonna go grab a piece of paper and a, um, a pencil and, and take this little quiz uh, along with me. Uh, and in the meantime, I am going to uh, slide over here by the Harmony Quilt, which I know you guys can't see. Uh, and I'm just going to read a few of the survivor stories uh, because I think that some people, just by reading these, I think sometimes people uh, can uh, relate 
to these stories. So the first one is, now I lay me down to sleep. I no longer open an eye to peep. I don't lay and pray and quake. I no longer am frightened awake. And that was written by a survivor in 2006. Another survivor wrote this in 1998. And it's titled, Moving On. I can't look back thinking I should have done more because I can't rewrite history and it only keeps me stuck. Things were not going to change for the better. Time had to prove that. He got worse. I have to accept the way things played out and move on. It was no longer safe to be with him. I truly was afraid. Looking back, I see it for what it was worth. I deserve so much better. Leaving was the most self-valuing act. And this last survivor story I'm going to read, and then we'll move on to our little quiz here. Daddy's Little Girl. Roses are red, violets are blue. Please stop touching me. I'm scared of you. Roses are red, violets are blue. I scream and cry, but that doesn't stop you. Roses are red, violets are blue. One day you will be old, and I will be stronger than you. Written by a survivor in 2006. Okay, so uh, a haven of safety in our relationships. Okay, so I'll explain this again. Get a piece of paper. Um, and then there's 12 questions, okay? So be thinking about this in your head or, again, like I said, if you want to follow along and write it down, you can. Uh, so here's the scoring, and it's a scale of 0 to 5. 0 is never, so if you want to write that down. Number 1 is rarely. 2 is occasionally. Three is more often than not. Four is most of the time. And five is all of the time. So let me read the uh, directions again, and then I'll read the first of the 12 questions, and then ex kind of explain again if you really want to do this little quiz to just kind of take a quick look at your relationship and, uh, you know, the, the, the level of safety uh, based on, and this is basically based on uh, emotional availability. So these questions relate to uh, the emotional availability between you, okay? And then these are the scorings. So the first question is, my partner gives me his, her full attention when I need to share what's important to me. So, next to that question, you're going to answer it with one of those scores. Never, rarely, occasionally, more often than not, most of the time, all of the time. And this first answer is how you perceive your spouse. So, in this particular case, my partner Jim gives me his full attention when I need to share what's important to me. How I would score that is five all the time. And then the second part of this question next to that, what you do then is you score what you think your spouse would say about you. So how well do you know him or her? And how would they, what would they say about you in that particular question? So from Jim's perspective, Annie gives me her full attention when I need to share what's important to me. And I believe Jim would give me a five. Okay, so are we getting kind of how this works? So question one, I've got a five and a five. Okay, so the second question is, I can count on my partner to be emotionally accessible when I need him or her. And again, you 
do your scoring and how do you perceive your partner and then what do you think your partner would say about you for that same question. The third statement is I am able to talk openly with my partner about what's important to me. The next question is we give and receive support from each other with ease. The next statement is, my partner is willing to put aside what he or she is doing to spend time with me. The next question is, my partner does not give more undue time or attention to things other than our marriage. The next question, my partner can tell when something is bothering me. Even when our relationship gets difficult, I know my partner will be there for me. Next statement, my partner is approachable. Next statement, my partner listens to me with warmth and ease. The next one, we generally turn to each other for support first. And then the last and twelfth question or statement, I am not hesitant to express or share myself with my partner. And then you kind of add up how many, what your total scores are, separate respective scores. One total is, you know, how you perceive your spouse, and then what you think your spouse will say about you. And then there's just kind of some you know, scoring here. Like if you're between a 48 and a 60, um, you've got a high safe haven and you perceive your spouse to be emotionally available to you and you probably have your spouse's full attention and able to listen to each other without judging. It's probably easy for you and your spouse to turn toward each other and deal with issues. And then the next level is like a medium safe haven, 47, let's see... Oh, I bet that's 40 to 47. <laughs> okay, and then, although you feel your spouse is emotionally available, at times it might be difficult to share openly and feel you are understood. So in response, you might be sharing negative ways to get your spouse to understand your perspective. If you answered any of the questions with a three or below, consider why this might be and look at that area of your relationship. Okay, and then if it's 40 or below, it's a low safe haven. Um, you probably don't perceive your spouse to be there for your emotion, for you emotionally. Know how you have dealt with this. Do you pursue your spouse critically or have you withdrawn? You and your spouse probably need to find new ways to try to get your spouse to understand you. So these are just, a, this is a kind of a quick look. This is one excerpt from this uh, scale uh, from this learning session that Dr. Skiff presented and um, it actually does have a little uh, use with permission Sharon Hart Mo Morris a haven of safety scale so there are several that was the emotional availability um, a questionnaire and then there's one based on responsiveness and relationship trust so for now, we'll do that one for today, and it just kind of gets you thinking, too, um, about some healthy ways to look at your relationship, because that's what we want to focus on here, that is healthy uh, uh, partnerships and relationships. So, I will close the Daily Scoop today. Um, I'm actually making a new vanilla bean ice cream today, and um, I'm going to put some peppermint and mint candies in it. Kind of like an, I don't know, just a new flavor I'm trying. So uh, the coolness for cool relationships, hopefully you all did well on your little quiz. And I'm going to close here today. And, um, you know, I don't, I, I had originally promised that with the Daily Scoop I would also play the harmony song. At the end of every, I want to kind of make that a tradition so we could continue to get the word about 
about spreading peace and harmony in our community through 